Hi, I'm Igor, founder of Solvi, and today I'm joining uh, Boris Colvé from a seed company, uh, Mass Seeds. Uh, we are in southwest of France, uh, where uh, Boris is uh, doing field trials. We look into how they are working using drone technology to make field trial assessments. First, Boris, uh, can you introduce yourself and your company? So I'm working for Mass Seeds. Mass Seeds is a company that is part of a bigger cooperative group called Maisador. Uh, it was founded in 1950s and uh, the very first research station dates back to 1960 something in the beginning. It was very small at the beginning but now it's a lot bigger. Now Masid has uh, 13 subsidiaries and we are present in more or less all continents. Inside that Masid's company I'm working in the R&D department mm -hmm. which itself has 100 to 120 persons working on 10 different stations also based in different countries and, uh, and continents. And uh, yeah, inside of that, I'm in charge of managing drones activities in general. All right, so I understand that the big part of, of the work uh, with field trials is the assessments, collecting different types of data points uh, around the performance of different varieties. So tell us how you've been doing the uh, field trial assessments traditionally before we started using drone technology. It was basically all done by hands. So it's counting plants and they're also measuring the heights, uh, collecting flowering dates. This is just all walking in the field and then collecting each data points one by one, walking with a small computer. That's how we, we used to do it uh, a couple of years ago, actually. So what about the, the quality of the data when you um, do the assessments manually? I think, I think the quality is good and very often when we are doing things with drone, the very first benchmark is to compare it to what we're doing with uh, by hand, yeah. because that's our baseline. So I think quality is good. Um, then there's one thing uh, that we do not have when we're doing uh, things manually is the, f the possibility to come back on what we were just doing. When we come back to the station at the end of the day, we only have an Excel sheet basically with all the ratings we've made. And if we have any doubts, the only way to check anything is to come back to the field. This is a big difference with drones because uh, if you have an image of the field, when you come back to your station, you actually have the image, so you have the raw data. And if you have any problem, anything you need to check, you can always come back to the image. So yeah. I think that's the main difference between uh, two types of uh, field clipping. And how, how widespread is the drone usage in your company? Like how many drones do you operate? In your fleet. So this year most of our fleet will be Mavic 3 M's. Uh, this is new. We used to be um, using Mavic 2 Pros. Uh, these ones are a lot better. Uh, first we get kind of the same RGB camera with higher resolution. That's very good. But on top of that we get the multispectral camera. Uh, then we get the RTK GPS which is very important for what we are doing with all the microplots overlaying we need to do. Uh, battery life is also a lot better, so we can fly longer. We have big fields, uh, right ranging from 2 hectares to 20 hectares. That can be long uh, to fly. And then also software that we have on the controller is a lot better. You can now actually plan the flights directly using the same software as you use for the direct feedback when flying manually. So yeah, that's a great improvement also. So I think that's the perfect drone at the moment for our winding. By using both RGB imagery and multispectral, can you talk about like what different use cases you use different types of imagery for? Only been working for, for with RGB so far. We now have also multispectral, so we do not have definite use case. Uh, this is actually one of the big things we'll We'll try during this year and we'll investigate how to use and how to leverage these multispectral data to do something else, phenotype something else. And when it comes to RGB imagery, are you using that for like plant counts? Uh, what kind of applications? Yeah, uh, RGB imagery is used for plant counts, plant heights, uh, various things on desiccation, so how fast things are drying, so based on the image also and also canopy cover. And what crops uh, does your company work with primarily? So we are breeding corn and sunflower and we are also selling all the type of crops like alfalfa, rapeseeds uh, for the crops. But yeah, uh, really the experimentation, the trialing fields we have are in both corn and sunflower. And this is what we extensively test. Okay, if we focus just on these two main crops, can you walk us through, like throughout the whole season, at which growth stages uh, do you collect the imagery with the drones and what kind of crop traits you extract from the drone data? So after planting, I think the very first flight and maybe the most important one at the moment is the one that we make at stage V3 to V4 in for corn, not for leaves, uh, very often a bit later in sunflower, but that's the one that is dedicated to plant counting. Then we'll try to do a second one to measure any presence of heterogeneity within the field. Uh, then I think we'll have uh, flights a bit later again, uh, 
pre-harvest. That's just going to be flights to be checking what we are about to harvest and also to be able to answer any question that we have on the final harvest data. So that's more of a check flight. And that's also when we can have flights on, for example, plant heights or any desiccation. So is crop uh, drying fast or anything? That's also when uh, these flights will happen at the, at the end of the cycle. Okay, so I'll guide you through a typical plan that we do for a flight mission. So we build a new trajectory there. Uh, zone trajectory. So first thing, of course, will be to plan the boundaries of the flight. So it looks something like this for this field here. Uh, then, of course, selecting which camera we want to use, uh, RGB or multispectral. Uh, then here for the plan count, we are aiming at a GSD of around five millimeters or lower than that. So this is what uh, this is what we'll try to set. Uh, usually we'll fly low for that reason. So the altitude will be somewhere around 20 meters is what we are aiming at again. Uh, then the speeds, um, the, um, it actually gives you a range of speeds. Uh, so what I would do here for the beginning is try to be on the slow side to make sure I have no blur on the images. So this is what I'll try to do. We'll see the, the final time that we'll need in the end. And then uh, what we'll need also to have a look at is the overlap. Uh, so left and right, I would be 70-70 as baseline. And then uh, we'll adjust everything based on the time of flight that we have, the number of batteries we have, etc. I have a GSD of 0.52 there with the 20 meters. So that's perfectly fine for me. These pylons there should be well over 20 meters. Camera settings are left as standard for the moment and we'll adjust them if needed uh, afterwards. Uh, 50 minutes of flight. The SD card is empty. So we're good to go. Tell us uh, what's happening after you've collected the drone data. How are you uh, handling it afterwards? I think it's pretty straightforward. We just come back to the station, upload that to the Solvi platform. Um, we usually uh, are then digitizing all the plots uh, to be ex to be able to extract any of the, the metric by microplot. The nice thing that, that is uh, using Solvi is that we have all of the fields in the same place. Uh, again, we have quite an extensive testing network. So we have fields coming in from Poland, from Germany, from France, from Romania, from Russia, Ukraine, a lot of places. So it's very nice to have everything on the cloud-based platform. And uh, it's also very nice to be able to extract uh, everything there. Plant count is very important and also plant heights and also any metrics on the veget vegetation indices. We just extract all of that as a CSV file uh, from the, the plot uh, shape file and that's it. Now let's have a look at what one of the typical mass seeds field trials look like and what is the workflow that they use to extract plot level data with uh, Solvi. So here we've got a fairly large uh, quant trial of about six hectares. It was flown in the middle of May and uh, the goal was to generate the plant counts. Uh, for that reason, the drone was flown relatively low at 20 meters altitude. Uh, now, DJI Mavic 3 multispectral was used, uh, and for plant counts, RGB imagery uh, was preferable, so that's what they uploaded here. Uh, about 2,000 images were collected, and the resolution turned out to be 0.6 centimeters per pixel. If we zoom in here in the map, uh, we can see that the imagery turned out to be really uh, nice, crisp and sharp. We can clearly see individual plants. There are also quite a few weeds in the field, which can potentially cause issues during the plant counting stage. But as long as uh, the resolution is sufficient and you can actually see the difference between the plants and the weeds, uh, the plant AI tool can be trained to focus on plants and ignore the weeds. Now, during the stitching process, Solvi also generates the elevation map. Uh, we can toggle it here and can see that it's uh, turned out to be quite detailed and we can see even the individual plants standing out here. 
Now, what can this be useful for? Uh, early in the season, it's not really that interesting to measure the height of the plants. Uh, it's more interesting uh, in later growth stages. The problem in later growth stages is that you don't really see uh, the ground level uh, and it's it's really hard to, to measure the height uh, accurately. And that's where the early growth stage elevation map comes in uh, because my seeds are using RTK on their drones. Uh, this elevation map can be used later in the season uh, to do the height calculations. Now let's switch over to the analytics and see how they generate the plant counts using the plant AI tool. Now the unique part about the plant AI tool is that it can uh, be trained to detect and count virtually any crop based on the examples that you provide. And that's basically what they do here. So let's open one of their detections and have a look at their examples. Uh, now the way it works is that you outline a small sample area uh, and within that area you circle in all the plants that you want to identify. You can also include uh, stuff that you don't want to identify, so in this case weeds. And from this sample area, the tool will then learn to uh, focus on the plants and ignore the weeds. Now, this is an iterative process where you maybe start with one or two such sample areas, uh, see what kind of outputs the tool generates. And if there are any inaccuracy, you can add uh, more samples and refine the results. So in this case, they have created six small samples uh, with about 10 to 20 plants in each of them and generated the counts for the whole field. So if we toggle the plant counts uh, tool here, we can uh, see uh, the counts for the whole field. If we zoom in, the red dots here show where the tool identified and counted the plants. Uh, in field trials, we want to know number of plants and plant density for each uh, individual plot. And uh, that's the next step with the zonal statistics. Zonal statistics tool provide with an easy and straightforward workflow for creating the plot boundaries and then calculating different metrics like plant counts, plot height, NDVI and other values. Uh, now, MassSeeds already uh, have the plot boundaries uh, created in their trial management system, so they use uh, an option to import uh, boundaries from a shapefile, but those who start from scratch, the trial plot tools can be really handy. With it, you can provide the uh, plot dimensions, gaps between plots, number of rows and columns, the naming convention, and then in a matter of a few uh, clicks, you can generate hundreds or thousands of plot real easy. Now, uh, here we see that in this trial, they have imported a little bit over 3000 plots. Uh, and the next step is to uh, choose what kind of metrics uh, we want to calculate. So here we select anything from raw reflectance values to different vegetation indices, plot height, etc. Uh, in this case, we are only interested in plant count. So that's what we choose here. And then just click this button to calculate the statistics. Now, once the statistics are calculated, uh, all the plots are also uh, categorized automatically in five different categories. Um, so we can easier spot plots with lower performance. For example, this plot over here uh, that is red shows uh, that the plant density here is the lowest, while the plots in dark green show where the plant density is uh, highest. We can also switch between the different metrics, so we can look at uh, number of plants, for example. <clears throat> Uh, but that can be NDVI, NDRE, uh, canopy cover, or any other metric. Now, the final step, once the statistics are calculated, is to just export the data. And for that, we move over to the Export tab and then choose what kind of format to download into. So the CSV file is suitable for further uh, analysis in Excel, uh, and Shapefile can be used to further analyze the data in JS software. There's many software that exist at the moment. Uh, to be able to host these images and view them. At the moment, uh, we are using Solvi, which is a very good solution and uh, also has a very, very good tool for plant detection or general detection. That is called Plants AI. Uh, we love that tool and that's why we, we work with Solvi at that moment. Mm -hmm.